In this video, we'll draw the Lewis structure for BaI2. This is barium iodide. Barium iodide is an ionic compound. So let's just draw the barium atom, and then we'll put two iodine atoms next to it. So because barium iodide is ionic, the metal, that's going to transfer valence electrons to the nonmetals here. So we look barium up on the periodic table. Barium's in group two. It's going to have two valence electrons. Iodine, that's in group 17, sometimes called 7A. It'll have seven valence electrons, each iodine atom. So since we have this ionic compound, the metal, it transfers electrons to the nonmetal. So now iodine, it has eight valence electrons. That's very stable. And then we'll take this electron here, and now this iodine has an octet. So you can see why we need two iodine atoms for every barium atom. Because the barium, it lost two electrons, it lost negative charges, it'll have a two plus ionic charge. Each iodine, it gained one electron. One valence electron, it'll have a one minus ionic charge. Sometimes we just write minus. Because the electrons have been transferred, we want to put brackets around each iodine atom to show that they're transferred and not shared. So this is the Lewis structure for BaI2, barium iodide. Sometimes you'll see brackets around the positive ion as well. Because we have this positive here, and then we have these two negative particles, they're attracted to each other. That's what forms the chemical bond, the ionic bond. Note that this is just a formula unit. If we had barium iodide, it would be a crystal. It would be a repeating pattern of these formula units. But this Lewis structure, it's useful. It helps us understand how the barium transferred electrons to the two iodine atoms and why we need two iodine atoms for every barium. This is Dr. B with the BAI2 Lewis structure. Thanks for watching.